Hey everybody, Josh here for Your Turn Go, and today I'd like to tell you about a little game called The Temple of Elemental Evil. This is actually the fourth in the line of Dungeons and Dragons adventure board games uh, made by Wizards of the Coast. This time around they actually teamed up with WizKids to give us this product. The first in the line was Castle Ravenloft, followed by Wrath of a Shardalon. Third was The Legend of Drizzt, and now Temple of Elemental Evil. A call back to an old, old adventure that you might have played back in the old D&D 1.0 edition. So, here we go. Let's open this guy up. Oh, I should note that on the front it says, Neverwinter, get your in-game items code inside. I think that's one of the video games that kids are playing. It's probably on one of the Game Boys or uh, maybe the Dreamcast, I don't know. So, here we go. Cutting it open. Hear that shrink wrap. So these games are all compatible. You can actually take the heroes, monsters, treasures, and whatnots from one and play it in the other. So if you like to play Drizzt and you can play him in the Temple of Elemental Evil, even though he came in a previous game. So what do we have here? Nice big box. This thing weighs in at about seven pounds, actually, so it is not light. It's chock full of all kinds of stuff. We've got a rule book. Now, the rules for these games are all very, very similar. The only difference really is in the campaign modes that you might come across. Uh, a little advertisement for Attack Wing. This is made in part by WizKids, keep in mind. So we've got a few different packets here. There's the code for the video game. The rulebook, and again, the rules are very similar for all of these. It's D20 based. It's actually very similar to the uh, 4.0 edition of Dungeons and Dragons. So you'll have daily powers and encounter powers and things like that. You'll roll a d20, add an attack stat, and you'll compare that against the monster's defense to see if you hit and do some damage. You'll also have special abilities per each character to make them a little unique. Uh, we also have the adventure book, and the adventure book has a series of scenarios you can play. Lots of little differences between them. There'll be bad guys you'll fight from one scenario to another, maybe a big Dragon bad guy at the end, I don't know, we'll have to see. Between sessions in this particular game, you can actually level up your character. Uh, you can do that once to make him level 2, and once you're satisfied with that, you can actually spend more experience or gold that you'll uh, get in a scenario to raise your, uh, your hit points or your attack values, things like that. So there's lots of cool customization you can do even between scenarios, unlike the previous entries in these games. Lots and lots of tokens and surge tokens, and what do we have here? The Lathradros, the Black Dragon. He's probably a big bad guy. Watch out, he'll eat your face off. Uh, lots of tiles. This is a tile-laying game, so you're going to create your dungeon or your town even in some of the scenarios. As you go through, it'll be a little random. So even if you play the same scenario more than once, it'll be a different uh, experience every time. So lots of replayability. These games are known, of course, for the miniatures. These are miniature board games. And this guy, watch out, Black Dragon, baby, look at that. Wingspan the size of the football field. He comes with actually a flying base. He's not some land lover. He's actually going to pop up above your characters while he eats their face off. Look at that. Lots of other miniatures. We have uh, looks like some dudes with bows and swords and things like that. This guy has what I would call... Perhaps a razor sword of some kind. Look at that guy. It's a very jagged, sawtoothed. Also some dudes with pikes and bows and things of that nature. Now these models you could paint if you wanted to. They do come in these solid colors. Uh, you might need to prime them first. I'm not sure if this kind of plastic would really take paint that well, but you can always experiment. If you really wanted to, you could buy the D&D fully painted miniatures that are uh, used for their RPG and whatnot. And those would look really great in this table, on the, in this game. It is uh, important to point out that this game is not what I would call a deep game. It is a light hack and slash sort of dungeon crawl. You're not going to get a lot of story necessarily, uh, at least not from the books. You can always make up stories as you go along, as role players are ought or want to do. Here's a big elemental dude. He's nice and blue, and somewhat transparent, a little bit translucent. But uh, watch out for these guys. And here's a couple big ones. Let's look at these guys. Looks like maybe an ogre of some kind. Oh, that's an Eden. He has two heads. That's what makes an Eden an Eden. 
And this guy will club your face off while the dragon's eating your face off, so just beware. We also have a fire elemental. He's kind of purple. Maybe he's a magma elemental. I don't know. And more of the... See, we got... Looks like a were... Maybe a knoll. These are actually knolls. The hyena men, wolf dog men kind of guys. Lots and lots of cards in these games. Every time you explore a tile, you're going to have, a, have an encounter, perhaps, and the encounters are bad in these games. Rock walls falling, killing everybody, traps going off, that sort of thing. And if I can get the cellophane off, which is a trap in and of itself, I might be able to show you what I mean. These are actually treasure and monster cards I just undid. For example, you might have a fire cultist. You can see how he has an attack value and some hit points and maybe a special movement ability. The AI that runs the bad guys in these games is kind of interesting. It shows how they move from tile to tile, how they're going to attack the good guys. It's important to note that there is no DM in this game. This is all a cooperative game. So everybody will be controlling monsters on behalf of the game itself. So there's uh, some interesting ways that you can position the monsters within the rules in order to make it easier on you. But in general, the monsters are gonna go first and they're gonna, they're gonna hurt you pretty bad. Here we have some more monsters, lots and lots of cards. I mean, hundreds, probably a hundred some odd cards, easily a hundred some odd cards. Uh, every character is going to have their own special abilities. You can see that, say, the fighter here, he has an action surge, and he can use this to take an additional action. What do you know? The ranger has Colossus Slayer. Attack one monster within two tiles of your hero. So these different characters are going to have much or varied attacks and abilities that allow them to stay alive or maybe combo with other characters and their abilities to really lay waste to the enemies that are going to be swarming around you. Because by the time you're finished with your adventure, you will have a lot of enemies around you. You're going to really have to pay attention and strategize to take care of them all. One thing to note, in this game, after you open it up, you'll have the big plastic inserts. As you'll see in many of these games, you know the insert. Underneath it are where a lot of the tiles are, so don't be fooled when you open it. There's a little nice surprise under the plastic insert. Really cool. Uh, here we can see Barwin, Aleros, Rat Shadow, and Talon, the heroes of our game. And they each have their own uh, cardboard tableau here. And when you level up, you actually flip it over to see what your new stats are, where your new HP is, and maybe you'll have an extra ability or two, something like that. So, lots of tiles, lots of tokens, lots of 600 gold pieces, one damage. I don't know what that is, but that looks awesome, and I can't wait to get that in the game. So I gotta tell you, I'm a big fan of this series. I've played all of them. I've owned all of them now. And uh, I really like to mix and match the heroes and the monsters. It gives each one a nice new flavor, so if you really want an undead theme, for example, you can take all the undead monsters from all these games, put them into one, go into Castle Ravenloft, and teach that vampire a lesson. You can do that. Go get them, kids. Let me tell you, this is a great game. The price point is about $65, so it's a little bit more than what you might want to spend, but it has a lot of free playability. It plays quickly. It plays in about an hour. Set up and tear down is nothing, and you can get a bunch of your friends together and just go into those dungeons and beat up the bad guys. So it's a buy, if you ask me. I like them a lot. So for Josh and your turn, go. Game on. Hey, thanks for watching! If you like us, subscribe!